Hi, I'm Henry. I'm Marvin. I'm Alexa. I'm Kate. I'm Jackson. I'm Nick, and we're pretending to be secret agents. Secret agents like us go on secret missions in the woods. What's this? Hey, look what I found. Wow, what kind of creature would have a bone that size? We've never seen anything like, like it around it here. None of us have. Only paleontologists that found these. A paleontologist is someone who studies dinosaur bones. So how can they find out what kind of bone this is? We're not paleontologists. Secret agents can always find a way. Hello. <laughs> okay, secret agents. I'm going to show you again at the CFI Dinosaur Convention. It's happening now on campus. The largest group of paleontologists ever to assemble are expected to speak this morning. Let's go hear their findings on dinosaur types, and perhaps we'll be able to make an educated guess about this artifact. Welcome to the 2016 Cape Fear Academy Dinosaur Convention. These esteemed paleontologists have many important findings to report on six different dinosaurs. In addition to their specific dinosaur, each of these paleontologists studied the layers of the earth in Pangaea. Please welcome them. Slash through other 
flesh of other animals. The allosaurus had two long legs that they walked down. Their feet had claws and they used them as protection. Their legs were bigger than the entire human body. The allosaurus was 40 feet long and 15 feet tall. It weighed about three tons. The allosaurus had a long tail with a bulky body and horns above its eyes. It also had a short neck. They used their long tail to hit other dinosaurs and they used their large body to push away other dinosaurs because the allosaurus was one of the biggest meat eaters and not many other could attack the allosaurus. <laughs> Jurassic and Cretaceous period. Its 
name means our lizard. The Brachiosaurus was first found in the Grand River Valley in western Colorado by paleontologist Elmer Riggs. Fossils have also been found in Tanzania. The Brachiosaurus was the same shape as the giraffe. It was 30 foot long, had a 20 foot shoulder, a 30 foot neck. It was 80 foot long and was a staggering 40 feet tall. The Brachiosaurus weighed as much as 12 elephants. It walked on four legs and its front legs were bigger than its back legs. The Brachiosaurus was an herbivore. It plants, leaves, stems, fruit, and small branches. Due to its height, the Brachiosaurus ate off of the tops of trees. Adult Brachiosaurus probably ate 880 pounds of plants every day. The Brachiosaurus had flat teeth instead of sharp teeth so that it could chew on plants. The flat teeth helped them crush their food. The Brachiosaurus had 26 teeth on the top of its jaw and 26 on the bottom. The Brachiosaurus's teeth were just like humans, so when they lost one, another one grew back. It used its tail to swap predators and its neck to keep other dinosaurs away. Sometimes the Brachiosaurus was attacked by the T-Rex and other meat-eating dinosaurs. The baby Brachiosaurus was 20 feet tall at birth. Many scientists believe that the Brachiosaurus was a gigantothem somewhere in between warm and cold-blooded animals of today. Similarity 
between a iguanodon's tooth and a tooth of a modern iguana. That's how the dinosaur got its name. It named me the iguana tooth. The iguanodon lived all over the world. Fossils of the iguanodon have been found in Belgium, England, North Africa, and the United States. Fossils have shown that the iguanodon had a head like a crocodile attached to a body like a scaly elephant or rhinoceros. Dozens of iguanodon fossils have been found together in groups. This means that they were most likely herding dinosaurs. The iguanodon can run up to 9 miles per hour, which is fast for a dinosaur for its size. An adult iguanodon weighed between 4 and 5 tons. It was 16 feet tall and 39 feet long, making it almost the size of a house. It had a bulky body, a long stick tail for balance, and hind legs that were much larger than its forearms. It had three-toed feet with hoof-like claws plus a conical thumb spike. One predator of the guanodon is the Tyrannosaurus rex. Its best protection was a sharp spike on its thumb, which it used to pierce its enemies. Also, although it knocked on all four legs, it could quickly run away from its bodies just by running on just two feet. The Gorodon was a herbivore. It ate fruits, plants, and leaves. It probably stood on all four legs to eat. It used its bony, toothless feet to rip off plants. The Gorodon was one of the first dinosaurs that had the ability to chew its food. Some scientists think it had a really long tongue like a giraffe. of today. It had a barrel-shaped body with a short pointed tail and five toes on its back feet. It had at the back of its skull it had a saddle-shaped frill which was, was used for, to protect the neck and for protection against enemies. Its skull was one third of its whole body. It walked on a four summit leg moving only ten miles per hour. It stayed in group for protection from a predator. We know it stayed in groups because if fossils have been found together. The Triceratops was almost the same size as the African elephant. It was about 13 feet tall, 30 feet long, and weighed about to 12 tons. Its name means three horn face but it has three horns. Two big ones above its size that were as long as hockey stick, and one smaller one on its mouth. The Triceratops' young probably hatched from eggs. The youngest Triceratops stayed in the middle of the hood for protection. The Triceratops' main predator was the Allosaurus. 
It used its three horns and neck fur to protect it. Okay, secret agents, it appears that from the information we learned at the CFA Dinosaur Convention that the bone we found was definitely from the Jurassic period. It must be a Brachiosaurus bone. Amazing. I wonder if that sound we heard before means this dinosaur is still alive. I don't know, but I sure don't want to find out. Yeah, let's get out of here. to our convention. We hope you have learned as much as we learned about the mysterious dinosaurs. Well, thank you guys for coming out today to see our first graders in this wonderful performance that they just did. This has been a tradition at Cape Fear for 12 years now, and other than the circus, the things that the kids tell us the first day of first grade is what dinosaur they would like to study and which circus part they would like to be in our first grade circus next month. So they look forward to it all year. They've done a ton of work. They write the script. They come up with the skit, all that kind of stuff. So they have worked super hard. We're very proud of them. We want to, th there's so many people to thank that are on the program. There's so many more people than just first grade that puts this on and puts all this together. So thank you to everybody that helped out. Thank you to the parents. We know that we send those lines home and it can be a little overwhelming for your six-year-olds to memorize them. But we appreciate it. You can see they all got it, which we knew they would. Um, we wanted to... The way that we're going to work the rest of the morning is we're going to dismiss lower school in just a minute. And I know I said we sent lower school an email that you're welcome to come back later on this morning and look at our exhibit in the back. So we'll let these kiddos go, and then we'll dismiss the first graders one group at a time to come find parents, and then you are welcome to walk with your child around our exhibit. They can show you all the amazing work we've been doing. And then after about 15 minutes, we'll go back and um, head to the classroom for a little celebration. There should also be a slideshow running with pictures of all of our work from dinosaurs, if technology works correctly. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.